Welcome to Vigorous PEDs. I'm Coach Steve, and I'm going to tell you when you are ready for your first cycle. Now, I understand that a lot of you are already on their 10th cycle, but if you're still drug-free, <laughs> this video might be beneficial to you. So before, um, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when I got started, you were ready for your first cycle when you could bench, say, three plates, squat four plates, and deadlift five plates. Now... I feel that still applies, but now that I know a little bit more about biomechanics, I understand that not everybody is going to be able to bench three plates, deadlift four plates, or squat fire four plates, sorry, squat four plates and deadlift five plates. So after 10 years of bodybuilding, I was able to deadlift five plates for about two reps, squat four plates for about two reps so again it's you know it's not 10 reps it's not 12 reps but i was able to move the weight and i'm going to be honest those squats were not to depth <laughs> those squats were not to depth especially not the depth that i use nowadays you know I'm, I'm way better with my range of motion than i am now compared to what i was back then when i was 25 26 years old i still can bench three plates even now that i'm taking starts just benching is not for me i can dumbbell press all day i can use a hammer strength machine all day with three plates four plates you know it's not the same obviously uh, because of the, you know the leverage is uh, involved i've benched three plates a couple times and one time or actually two times i injured my pec doing it so i already know benching is not for me and benching might not be for you as well, um, I see some people bench four plates and they still tear a pec. You know, I've seen people bench two plates and tear a pec. So you can go by strength. You know, if you're benching three plates, deadlifting five plates, and squatting four plates, you can pat yourself on the back. You're strong as f you should be able to start a first cycle. Again, some guys are going to be that strong when they're 18. Trust me, I've seen it. And when you're 18, you're way too young. Your growth plates haven't even uh, fused yet. You're still growing in height. And again, you got to remember, once you jump on steroids without understanding the nutrition part of it, um, you're going to take nutrients away from your growing, uh, growing process. And I feel that I've done the same thing myself because I didn't understand the nutrition aspect in my younger years. You know, when I started training at 15 years old, I didn't really focus on the nutrition that much. I ate clean, you know, clean, what, with the limited information we had back then. But it was certainly not enough calories and certainly not enough micronutrients to make sure that I would grow muscle and grow in length. And, and that's probably now when I'm only 5'9 or 5'8. You know, my dad is taller than I am. So is that because of bodybuilding? Probably, <laughs> you know. But it's actually because I wasn't eating correctly, allowing myself to grow when I was training so hard in my younger years. So... All that aside, you got to make sure your nutrition is in place because steroids is going to increase recovery and increased recovery requires more nutrients. So if you don't have your nutrition in place, which luckily I did have uh, in place when I was 25, 26, when I started my first cycle, you need to be able to have your nutrition in place. And it means cooking all your own meals, eating on time, figuring out which foods digest well for you and which don't. Yeah, so you need to maybe have some sort of done some sort of elimination diet or ketogenic diet or carnivore diet or eating paleo or you're doing carb cycling all these things you can already incorporate when you're drug free you don't need to take steroids to play around with nutrition and figure out what works for you because steroids at one point are going to alter your digestion anyway and you need a little bit of experience with your own body without the steroids to figure out what foods work which one don't how many calories you need if you, you know, which workout days require more calories than other days, especially if you're trying to improve weaker body parts. So, for example, legs and back would be a high day if those are your weak body parts. And the other days would be like a medium day or a low day. Um, and it can be in relation to calories or it can be in relation to carbohydrates. Yeah? Again, you'll have to play with that, figure out what works before you add in the steroid. Because steroids are very forgiving. So, even if you do everything wrong... And you go in a little bit of testosterone, even if it's only hormone replacement, you're going to get results. But if you do everything right before you start taking steroids, that little bit of hormone replacement is going to take you to the next level a lot better compared to when you're trying to figure out your nutrition and your training while you're on your first cycle. You should already have that in place. So sort out your nutrition and dedicate your life to eating, cooking, dishwashing, 
and figuring out your micros and your macros just to make sure that you get, you know, adequate nutrition in on a daily basis. And you should be getting it in a daily basis for years, years upon years before you start your first cycle. So that's the nutrition part of it. Training, you should just be at the top. You shouldn't be gaining any more strength. If you're still gaining strength, you probably don't need steroids. Yeah? Again, it kind of tapers, so you're going to gain a significant amount of strength in the beginning. You're going to eat a ton of food, and at one point it's going to taper, and you will no longer gain strength, or you're at the point where your recovery can't keep up with your strength level. Yeah? And the recovery is going to be determined by your food intake, and your hormone levels. Now, the hormone levels, of course, are going to be the rate limiting factor because you're still drug free. So if you're producing um, seven milligrams of testosterone per day, for example, you're still reasonably young, you're only going to get that much recovery from it. Even though your calories are sky high and it's making you uh, morbidly obese, <laughs> the rate limiting factor is still going to be hormones. And then at one point, Exogenous hormones will be beneficial to increase the recovery rate and allow you to progress further in muscle mass and strength. So make sure you've done progressive overload for a while. There's many different formats of progressive overload, many different training splits. You just need to be in peak all-time strength. And it could mean that you're benching three plates, squatting four plates, and deadlifting five plates um, for two reps or multitude of reps, um, or, or one of those exercises you simply can't do biomechanically, but you're still at peak performance. Yeah, I was at peak performance. I couldn't bench, but I could deadlift and squat for days, and leg press, and you know all the other all the other stuff that you would associate with heavy work, right? So I was at peak performance. I was eating four thousand, almost five thousand calories by the time I started my first cycle. So I was eating a ton of food and moving a decent amount of weight. Hormone replacement dose of testosterone is gonna elevate this training and this nutrition to the next level and you're going to get great, great, great results. Now, throughout this process of several years figuring out your nutrition and your training style, you should be able to get some compliments from juiced up bodybuilders, from people who are actually already on steroids. So hopefully you have took my previous advice, um, which I've made in several other videos, is that you sign up to a gym where there's already bodybuilders because again, you need to be inspired. You can get inspired from YouTube, Instagram, great, but it's there's there's a, there's a wall of separation there. You need to be around bodybuilders in your own gym. So please sign up with a gym where there's bodybuilders, preferably juiced. Start training, start focusing on your nutrition. When you start getting compliments from the bodybuilders who are already on cycle, yeah, and again, make sure that these bodybuilders are respectable, not uh, you know roided up gym rats. Uh, there's a, there's a bit of a difference there. Once the bodybuilders come to you and said, hey, dude, you're putting in the work, you're uh, getting strong, and they don't mention steroids, they just give you a compliment from a bodybuilder perspective. So they say, you look great, you have a good body, you have a good physique, it's nicely balanced, and you train hard, and they're not just blowing smoke up your ass. That's another point of consideration that you can take to say you're ready for a first cycle, because now you're part of the bodybuilding subculture. Yeah, you're already big enough, you're already training hard enough. You're already paying attention to your diet enough for an enhanced bodybuilder to give you credit. And now you're ready to take that step into enhanced bodybuilding. So for me, I was getting compliments from other enhanced bodybuilders for several years. That's unfortunately usually only during the off season when you were, you know, a little bit bigger, a little bit fluffier, a little bit more voluminous because you're having high caloric intake. And then when you would diet down, you would still look it was still pretty obvious you were natural, you know, because everything would deflate in the, in the, in the lack of caloric intake and the excessive amount of cardio that it used to do back then. It would just slowly shrink you over time from like 88 kilos to 74 kilos. So that's a significant weight drop. Again, you know, no steroids in the picture, no pharmaceutical fat burners and nothing like that. You lose a decent amount of size and those compliments go away. <laughs> you know, they'll say you have abs. You look lean. But they don't say you look lean and big. So as long as you get compliments in the off season where they say you're big and strong, you're good, in my opinion. That's my opinion. You can form your own opinion. The last and most important thing is blood work. And luckily for me, I did blood work a couple times before I started going hormones. So I would do blood work once a year. That was part of my healthcare insurance. You could do full blood work. 
um, check your complete blood count, your liver enzymes, your kidney function, and a very limited hormone panel. So there was basically total testosterone and estrogen, not sex hormone binding globulin, not free testosterone, not bioavailable testosterone, certainly not DHT. But hey, this is the healthcare system in Holland. They're there to fix you when your health is declining, not as a preventative measure to see, you know, if your health markers are changing over time. So I did notice that my total testosterone was declining. At one point, it was 650 nanograms per deciliter. And I decided, you know what? For this amount, like middle top of the range, I'm not really making the progress that I want anymore. I was still progressing, don't get me wrong. It's just very, very slow. And then probably in hindsight, I could have done a little bit more on my nutrition and training side um, and supplementation side to progress myself maybe a one or two more kilos on my natural potential. And I'll be honest about it. I didn't. The absolute natural potential you're never going to reach because your patience is going to prevent you from reaching it unless you're a diehard, you know, super natty. Um, but, but then you're probably not here on this YouTube channel. At one point, you're going to reach a ceiling. The progression is going to be too slow. You're going to run out of patience. And you'll use some of these um, measuring points to start your first cycle. So for me, that was 650 nanograms per deciliter of total testosterone. If I didn't have such a stressful job back then, if I focused a little bit better on my nutrition, supplementation, training, um, you know, things that I know now and that I help my natural clients achieve before they start their first cycle with me, maybe six months or one year of drug-free coaching. With what I know now, I probably could have put on one, two, maybe even three kilos of muscle, solid muscle on top of my frame before jumping on my first cycle. So again, this is in hindsight, 10 years later, I'll be honest to admit it, I didn't reach my full natural potential, but I was kind of like, you know, creeping, let's say 95%, yeah, to, to quantify, 95% of my natural potential. And at that point, I wanted to see what all the fuss is about because everybody around me was already on hormones. And I just wanted to see what uh, what it was going to do for my physique, which, you know, I was very happy with the results of my first cycle, that's for sure. You, you have to know when to deload so you don't reach an overtrained state. I'm, I'm still struggling with this today. But I just scheduled them in, you know, preventatively every six to eight weeks because otherwise I just, you know, beat myself into the ground because I love to train. I love to train and I hate to deal out, but it's a necessity. <laughs> and that's something you have to learn before you start taking steroids because you can't train for six months straight or four months straight or however long your first cycle is going to be. It could be one year. It could be indefinitely. Again, there's many different ways to use steroids. One of them is hormone replacement. You're still using steroids but it's a, basically a, a lifetime commitment of hormone replacement. So again, depending on the dose and how you respond and how your blood work is going to be, you might run short cycles, two months, three months, six months, or indefinitely because you're moderate with your dosages. And then last but not least, you need to be long in the fitness and bodybuilding field before you start a first cycle because there's no point in taking steroids if you don't belong. If you don't belong, unless you have a medical reason, okay, I understand you go on hormone replacement, you have a medical reason, your testosterone is low, but trust me, trust me on this, if you focused on your nutrition, your supplementation, and your training, your natural testosterone is going to be as high as it can because you're in a perfect state of health. I was in a perfect state of health when I started training. The only thing that I could have reduced was stress. Hey, you're trying to pay the bills, you're trying to make a career, I understand Money is still an issue causing a tremendous amount of stress, which is going to lower your testosterone levels. But training, nutrition, and diet and supplementation is still going to determine how high your testosterone levels are going to be. So, you got all that out of the way. You're ready for your first cycle. Please understand that this is a lifetime commitment. <laughs> because nobody, or at least 99% of the people I know, only does one cycle. It's one cycle. You go from a Toyota to a Ferrari, and you never want to go back to the Toyota. I'm not hating on Toyota, but <laughs> that's just the most commonly car that I can see here in Thailand. Toyota's everywhere and not so many Ferraris. So you take yourself from average to supercar level by going on steroids. And now you don't want to go back to an average car. It's that simple. So most people, I tell them, I warn them. I say, hey, listen, you want to go on cycle. It's not a cycle. It's a lifetime commitment. Lifetime commitment. You might do blasting and cruising. You might be on hormone replacement. Even as low as 100 milligrams of testosterone per week, you're still on cycle. You're still taking exogenous hormones. You still need to do your blood work frequently because now you're basically playing your own endocrinologist, hematologist, hepatologist, 
and a wide variety of uh, uh, doctoral degrees that you actually didn't go to school for, and neither did I. Um, and most of you didn't. I know some of you guys are doctors, um, but you're highly specialized. So you're either an endocrinologist, or you're an internist, or you're a hepatologist, or a hematologist, you're specialized. Bodybuilding and enhanced bodybuilding takes all these aspects <laughs> and puts them together. And to be fair, most of us are not highly specialized in either of these, but we're still going to go on hormones. You're even playing your own nurse. You need to know how to practice sterile injection practices. Yeah, these are all things you have to learn. So it's never as simple like, oh, I'm going to go on steroids and I'm just going to pin. No, there's a learning curve to everything you're going to do. And your body's going to change. And you need the fundamental understanding of your blood work before you even make this first step of... Uh, harmonizing because your entire blood work panel is going to change. Your hematocrit might go up. Your HDL might go down. Your LDL might go up. Your total testosterone might go up. Your liver enzymes are going to go up. Not necessarily from what you're taking, but because your training intensity is going to go up so much that the enzymes that are found in the liver are also found in skeletal muscle. I, mean, I think most of you guys already know this. But by increasing your training intensity, your liver enzymes are going to go up, your uh, creatine phosphate kinase is going to go up, and your creatinine is going to go up too, because now you have more muscle mass. And trust me, I wasn't ready for this either, so that's why I'm trying to give you guys this advice <laughs> to get you ready before you get started. A lot of these kidney and liver markers are going to go elevated because you're putting on more muscle mass and your training intensity is going to increase because your recovery is increasing, right? And again, if you want to put on more muscle, you increase the recovery, but you also need to increase the intensity because the bigger you get, the more intensity you need to stimulate your muscles for additional growth. And that's going to result in higher creatinine levels, higher creatine phosphate kidneys levels, and higher liver enzymes. Yeah, that's the ALT and AST. The gamma GT should still stay in range and all the other liver enzymes should also stay in range. And the same for the kidney markers. Your cystatin C should stay in range. Your BUN should stay in range. Your uric acid should stay in range. All your serum electrolytes should stay in range. It's just your creatinine, CPK, liver enzymes that are going to go up. By taking steroids, your training intensity increases. Just be ready for it because you're going to do blood work maybe a year later, and all those levels are going to be elevated, and your doctor is not going to know what to do. And the doctors that do have an understanding of enhanced bodybuilders and their blood work are spaced far and few between. And I've only met a few on this planet. I hate to bring this into it, but most doctors don't have understanding of nutrition or supplementation in relation to enhanced bodybuilding. So you're basically getting handicapped advice in that sense because all these things contribute so if your cholesterol is high yeah, is that because of the oral steroids is it because of lack of detoxification through the liver or is it because of high dietary cholesterol intake yeah, you, in most of these cases you don't need a statin well yeah, again so once you're on hormones the medical field that you're relying on to keep you healthy you're you're actively stepping away from this medical field <laughs> by yourself and you're not going to get the best care you possibly could because you know the medical field is not specialized in and has bodybuilders it's specialized in sedentary people who have declining health because they don't take care of it you know over their uh, course of their lives you're gonna have to learn a lot we have coaches for that we have um, very intelligent doctors who do specialize in enhanced bodybuilders but again they don't take nutrition into consideration or some of them don't and the ones who do take nutrition into consideration uh, might either lose their medical license or are not specialized in enhanced bodybuilding so you're simply, by, by going in the enhanced route, you're stepping away from the medical field and you're making things very, very difficult and complicated for yourself. Enhanced bodybuilding is also very expensive. You're going to require more money, not only for steroids, but for additional blood work, additional supplements, um, more specialized eating. Again, because your digestion is going to change, you know, oral steroids are going to change your digestion. So you might have to switch to different food sources which are going to be expensive. Needless to say, you're going to get stronger, which requires more food, but also might increase your membership fees to the gym because not all gyms are equipped with machines or dumbbells or weights uh, for you to progress further. So I, for example, I'm, I'm decently strong. I mean, I'm, I'm not moving mountains of weight, but I could 
I cannot train in 99% of the gyms out there <laughs> because the exercise selection and the weights available are not enough for me to progress. So I can train like three gyms in Thailand. Two of them are the muscle factory. <laughs> That's it. The rest is just, I would I would be able to train there for a week on a holiday, but I would not be able to train in most of the gyms here um, if I wanted to progress for months now. Never, never. There's very limited gyms in the world where I can train and progress. It's it's that simple. And, and, and most of the gym memberships with a wide exercise uh, selection and, and big facility, their membership rates are higher. <laughs> You know, the day passes are going to be more expensive. All these things contribute. Yeah? Everything contributes. The blood work, the health supplementation, the gym membership, the clothes you're going to have to buy. Um, yeah, because, you know, the bigger you get, the more restrictive you are with clothing, especially when you go into the high dosages of growth hormone. Or that's all later. And you might need to buy, you know, <laughs> size 14 shoes. Luckily, I'm still at an 11 and a half. But before I started growth hormone, I was a... I think I was a nine and a half, and now I'm an eleven and a half. It's two sizes in uh, in ten years of uh, steroid use. It, people don't talk about it, but it's it's definitely a reality. So when you're ready to go, get started in your first cycle, make sure you have your PCT laid out in advance. Don't buy your PCT later. You need to get that from the start of your cycle, just in case, because hormones are not for everybody. Maybe you're going to get an adverse reaction, which you didn't anticipate, even though you did all the research regarding the side effects of testosterone, maybe provirin, maybe a Rimidex, Aromacin, a Novidex, all the things that, you know, most people start with, with their first cycle. Again, that's your decision what to run first. I can make that decision for you. You have fundamental understanding of these potential side effects. But it still might mean that you get side effects which are completely untolerable and steroids are not for you. In that case, you need to have your PCT planned out from the beginning. Yeah? You need to have your Novadex Reclomid, your ACG or Triptrelin, um, or ASMG, depending on how old you are. You all need to have that at the beginning of your cycle in case you do want to stop. You don't have to stop cold turkey and then frantically start sourcing that in the gym or online or through a hospital with a prescription you already have that ready for you in case you need to abort. That does happen. I've seen it. I've seen it happen around me. People go in their first cycle, they anxiety, uh, loss of libido, hair loss, gynecomastia. You know, maybe they didn't do the research in the beginning, or maybe their body is just rejecting the high dosages of testosterone. At least start with testosterone. That's what your body is used to. You're already producing testosterone. If it doesn't work out, okay, you can consider using other compounds as your base. I feel everybody should start with a testosterone base um, and see how they respond. Again, if you don't respond well, you don't want to try some of the other compounds because their side effects don't sound appealing to you. You have your PCT laid out for you. You could PCT, recover, write it off as a lifetime experience that steroids are not for you. Make sure you get the highest quality PEDs you could find, preferably farm grade or reputable underground lab. And when you go with a reputable underground lab, make sure you do the research and not just go by one guy's anecdotal opinion that happens to be selling this underground lab. You know, do your due diligence researching pharmaceutical grade, make sure that it's real and not counterfeit. Yes, again, it's a huge learning curve. So make sure you get the highest quality possible of PEDs you want to take. Make sure you have an accurate supply in your PCT ready. And they should be able to start harmonizing reasonably safely. And again, the only way how you know your body is going to respond is by getting your hands dirty. Really, because you can do all the reading. But again, all the reading is not going to represent how your body is going to handle it. And how your body is going to handle it is how you're going to have to proceed. And hopefully you have adequate understanding of your blood work, nutrition, training, um, health supplementation, everything that goes along with it. So you can make the right adjustments. Now, there's a couple side effects that most people are going to experience. It's either or genochomastia, hair loss, acne, water retention, mood and anger management uh, issues, libido changes, um, and maybe post-injection pain. You know, virgin muscle is going to get post-injection pain no matter what you use. So whether you use pharmaceutical grade or underground labs, Post-injection pain is real, and it's going to happen within the first six to eight injections of every injection site. So you put it in your glutes, left glute, light glute, left glute, light glute. 
If you inject half a cc per time, the first eight weeks, you're going to get post injection pain because your body is not ready, you know, for exogenous um, oil based injections. It's just not ready for it. And same with water based injections. Luckily, you'll get rid of that over time. Your body adjusts, your body adapts. It increases the lipases and the esterases, uh, which are enzymes which help break down the fats and uh, cleave off the ester. So those will increase over time. And once they're sufficiently high, absorbing the oil that you inject in the depot is going to be relatively easy until you do PCTU or off for like six months. And then you might get post-injection pain again while those esterases and lipases increase, um, you know, to deal with the injections again. The acne you're going to have to learn to control either through dietary changes or use of supplementation or estrogen control. Again, there's many factors that contribute to acne, so be ready for it. Genocomastia, again, same. Make sure you control your estrogen levels and don't start steroids at a too high body fat. So you get a lot of aromatization. You should be reasonably lean. Actually, I should have put that as the prerequisite, right? You should be reasonably lean before you start a cycle so you don't have so much aromatized activity going into it. So if you're over 15%, you're not ready, get down to 12% body fat, and now you're ready to start your first cycle. Hair loss, look at your parents or your grandparents. If they're bald, you're probably gonna get bald. <laughs> it's that simple. If your grandparents are not bald, like mine are not bald, you don't have to worry about it. But if they are shedding or you've got male pattern baldness, steroids are definitely gonna increase um, the rate of your uh, development of male pattern baldness. You need to look into, uh, you know, finasteride, detestride, uh, catechonazole, cream, um, and, and anything that's popular for hair loss nowadays. I mean, I'm not really the guy to ask because I don't experience any hair loss or prostate growth or, um, you know, DHT induced acne. Um, my acne problems are always uh, estrogen related or diet related. <laughs> so my diet is clean, but not 100%. And the libido changes are going to be highly individual because there's so many things that contribute to libido. Could be hormone balance, could be a caloric intake, could be stress. Um, you know, respect what you have with your partner. Again, we did a whole video about this already. Take all that into consideration because libido changes are real. Your libido is either going to go up, your either your libido is either going to go down, or it's going to go up and down, and it's going to be a roller coaster. Um, just be ready for it because all these side effects are real and they do occur and just make sure that the results that you're going to get from the steroids are going to outweigh the potential side effects that you might get by taking steroids. Yeah? Go into it as informed as you can. And then last but not least, something you definitely got to realize is that once you go on steroids is that all the muscle that you've built, you're now renting by the use of steroids. And as long as you're paying rent, and micromanaging everything that comes along with steroid use, you get to keep your body. You know, as you get a little bit older and, and your body starts to deteriorate simply because of age and you can't keep the training intensity up because you've got some injuries or your tendons don't really want to work with this weight anymore. But as long as you're taking steroids, you get to keep your body. But when you do go off steroids, and especially when you've been taking steroids for like 10 years, 20 years, maybe even 30 years, you do your PCT and, and you might not even recover. You might be looking at hormone replacement for life. Okay, now you're medically, you have a medical reason to use hormone replacement, but going from a thousand milligrams of whatever compound combination you're using to a hundred milligrams of testosterone replacement, it's gonna be a significant difference and your body is gonna digress over time into this new baseline. Yeah, because you, you've reached your, hopefully you've reached your natural potential that's right here, then you increased your natural potential by taking steroids. Now you're way bigger than uh, naturally possible. Over time, maybe 20, 30 years, you go back to your natural potential, but your natural potential is now maintained with hormone replacement. You're going to digress. No ifs, no ways, no excuses. There's no way around it. You're going to digress. So realize that when you go on steroids, whatever physique you're built, it's going to be temporary. It's going to be 100% temporary. If your foundation was good before you started taking steroids and all the muscle that you've built was built basically at the maximum of your natural limit, you should return back to your previous max on your natural potential, yeah, or maybe slightly below it depending on your hormone profile. So your hormones will slowly decline. 
your muscle mass will decline, your strength will decline, hopefully your caloric intake declines as well, uh, otherwise you're just going to end up fat, <laughs> so please restrict your calories by the time you come off hormones, and you will regress to a state which is our muscle size that is very close to your natural potential previously. Again, you got to remember that before you started taking steroids and your hormone levels were 650 nanograms per deciliter, like in my case, you get a certain amount of muscle mass in return. Now you go on steroids, you build a significant amount of muscle on top of that. Now you go back to 650 nanograms per deciliter, um, either through hormone replacement or your PCT, and somehow you're able to maintain this natural testosterone levels. You're going to go from this muscle mass back down to your natural limit. But it's going to look a little bit different because in the meantime, you created a significant amount of hyperplasia and you got more muscle cells, which now need to be maintained on the same amount of testosterone, which is actually lower considering the amount of muscle cells you have. So let's say you doubled the amount of muscle cells in the time you were on steroids. For example, just arbitrary example. You doubled the amount of muscle cells that you have. Now you would need double the amount of testosterone for androgen receptor binding and gene transcription to make this muscle look cosmetically pleasing. So now you're actually at 50% of your testosterone dose, even though the serum concentrations are the same. By adding muscle tissue, you would need more testosterone to maintain it. So if you go on PC, your PCT, you go off all hormones and somehow you're able to maintain a decent serum testosterone level or you maintain it with hormone replacement, you're not going to look that cosmetically pleasing. It's just end of story. Be ready for it. Yeah? And it might be 30, 20, 10 years later, you know, whenever you decide not to take steroids anymore. Um, yeah, it's just, it's all going to be temporary. <laughs> so, but you can have a good time during this temporary phase of your life. Um, I'm, I'm certainly having a good time on PEDs. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you uh, found something in this video that could help you in your decision-making process before you start taking PEDs. Um, I'm not trying to discourage you from taking PEDs um, because I'm taking them and I'm, my quality of life has tremendously improved. Please let me know how you approach your first cycle in the comment fields. I would love to know what went right and what went wrong. It's always uh, very interesting to see how people approach it differently and um, what they learn from it. Because for me, it's been 10 years and I would definitely approach it in uh, some similar fashions and some uh, different methods uh, now that I've learned a lot more along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on your way out. And I'll see you in the next video.